All right, quick question. What do Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Mark Cuban have in common? Well, they all got good at this one high value skill at the start of their career, and that skill is sales. I mean, you can literally listen to Mark say it himself here on this video. If I'm onto my last $500 and all I have is a phone, I'm gonna find a sales job. So if you're ready to level up as a closer and make more sales in 2024, grab a sheet of paper, grab a pen, and let's jump right in. All right, guys, the ultimate guide to remote closing episode number four, this is sales 101. So as a quick reminder, if you're new to the series, down in the second link in the description is gonna link you over to this document so you can save it for your records. You can follow along with this video. In the first link in the description, make sure to click that as well. That's gonna bring you to our remote closing masterclass, which basically takes this entire free course series and puts it into like a 45 minute video. So you can uh, really condense your learning if you wanna do that. So click that link probably after you watch this video though, it'll be a refresher after you watch it. So what we're gonna cover in this video. So first things first is the key to sales. So what are people really buying? Like what are they actually buying on these sales calls? As a hint, it is not gonna be your product or your course, which might be a little bit confusing, but we're gonna cover that first, so make sure to stick around. Also, we're gonna cover the emotional states, so understanding six emotional states, and then how to use those to your advantage to make the sale at the end of the call. Next, we're gonna cover Heaven Island versus Hell Island, so this is finding the real before and after of your client and where they are and where they wanna be, and then how you can use this to help you make more sales, again, at the end of the call. And then we're gonna cover, which my personal favorite, and something that like literally changed the game for me in sales, is the belief ladder. So this is the seven beliefs that the prospect needs to have to buy at the end of your sales calls. Now a disclaimer here, guys, this video is going to be insanely valuable, but really only for those of you that want to learn sales at the highest level. This video isn't gonna cover scripts or anything like that, but really the, again, the psychology behind all this stuff. So my mentor Cole once told me this, if I teach you the philosophy behind sales, you will learn the way of thinking. And in turn, you will understand the fundamental communication you can use in every aspect of your life. So instead of just having a script and like, here's a script and go enjoy and try to use that. If you can understand the philosophies behind this and really just like, again, the fundamental communication and how to use that to your advantage is you can not only use this in your sales conversations and make a crazy amount of money, but you can also use it in every aspect of your life, in your regular relationships, talking to people on the street, and it's gonna make you an extremely likable person. So make sure to stay to the very end for the full context of how to implement all this in your sales process. So a second ago, if you were confused when I said, okay, people don't actually buy the product or the course, uh, this will clear it up hopefully and show you like what people are actually buying, what they're not buying. Now the left here in this red, what people do not buy, this is what most people are thinking. They most, most of the people think they buy because of your offer or because of you, right? Your company, your personal brand or testimonials. Now don't get me wrong, those things definitely help, but these are more the logistical reasons as to why people are going to buy the offer. So again, it helps, but the reason that people are actually buying is states of being both on an emotional and a surface level. So the way you can think about this is people are essentially buying the end result on a surface and emotional level, all this of surface level, emotional level, we're gonna give you a ton of examples here in a second. So just remember, people are buying that end result, right? They're buying the end goal of where they ultimately want to be. Now, when the path of least resistance from their current situation to their desired situation is your offer and that meets in the middle, that is when they're going to buy. So again, current situation, they need to be, you need to understand their surface and emotional level and then your desired situation, your offer needs to be the best, the fastest, and the most surefire way, like 100% guaranteed in their mind, to actually bridge the gap from their current situation to their desired situation. Okay, so we have this surface level and emotional level. Let's break down and give you a couple examples. So the surface level current situation for someone that needs to lose weight, right? They're gonna say, I'm overweight and I need to lose weight, right? Or someone that wants to, let's say, uh, make more money and you know make money online, right? They're gonna say, I hate my job, I need to find a way out of this job. Then we have the emotional level current situation, which is, okay, my spouse now finds me less attractive because I've put on pounds since we've been together. So you can see very different there, right? One is like, I'm overweight, I need to lose weight. The other is, well, my spouse finds me less attractive. And those are the reasons, right? The reasons as to why they want to lose weight is going to be the reason that they make a decision at the end of the call. And it's what's also gonna position you as the expert in understanding that you can solve their problem. So again, I feel stuck and unfulfilled in my position at work. So again, surface level is I hate my job, I wanna get out of it. The emotional level is I feel stuck and unfulfilled in my position of work. 
So if we start to look at the surface level desired situation, right, is the person that says they want to lose weight, they're going to say, I want to lose weight because I've gained 20 pounds, right? That's the uh, surface level desired situation is they want to lose weight because of that end result, right? The result of them gaining 20 pounds. Now, the emotional state of that, right, is I want to feel confident again and have my partner look at me like they used to. The biggest mistake most newer salespeople make, or not even newer, sometimes like really seasoned salespeople, is they just keep it at the surface level. But the emotional level of I want to feel confident again, right? You are going to sell them at the end of the call on them wanting to be, feel confident again, not on them just wanting to lose the weight, right? You can obviously see that the emotional level is so much more impactful. So again, I want to quit my job. That's what they're saying as the you know desired situations. Hey, I want to quit my job. But the uh, emotional level is I want to have more money so I can travel and actually enjoy my life. Also, I want to just really be able to impact other people's lives. So as you can see, as we're breaking this down, is we transition from, you know, I feel stuck and unfulfilled in my position at work. If we can sell, on, sell them on being able to impact more people's lives and also just actually enjoy their life, we're selling on so much more than like, all right, we're gonna help you out of your job, right? It's like, hey, we're gonna help you out of your, your job so that you can make more money and then travel the world with your family and enjoy life and then also impact people's lives, right? You can see even the way that I'm saying it is like, it just some, comes off so much more powerful and those are the reasons why people are going to buy. Now we can take these emotional states, right? I obviously gave a couple of examples, but these can be broken down into six key categories. Now these, I took this directly from uh, Tony Robbins. He talks about these six human needs and these are what they're, they're written down here. So certainty, variety, significance, growth, contribution, and love and connection. Now we'll break down each of those, but what you need to understand is certainty and significance are the most important and they're going to be the most powerful when you're having these conversations with the prospect. So this is a really quick diagram here. Um, so what we're gonna do is just give you an example of the entrepreneur that's on the business roller coaster. So I used to sell real estate agents, so I'm just gonna use real estate as the example. So their surface level situation is that they have inconsistent lead flow and revenue and income and life, right? Inconsistent everything. Their, their life's inconsistent, their income's inconsistent, their revenue's inconsistent, and their surface level destination is they want consistent increased revenue, more lead flow, flow right? Higher income, better life. That position right there is where most salespeople are going to try to sell, right? And the reason they don't make a ton of sales is because they don't make it past the surface level situation. So if we look at the emotional situation, right? The emotional situation that let's say this real estate agent has, and we break down these, these um, you know, these six basic needs is uncertainty is, you know, they, they have anxiety that comes from not knowing where their next lead, their next client, the next dollar is going to come from, right? So what we want to get them to is certainty. And we'll, we'll break down the, uh, the, you know, the emotional destination here in a second. So maybe the lack of significance, right? Is not feeling as if he's the provider that needs to be at home. And then also just making less than his peers. So on the left side, you can see that there's a lack of all these things, right? One of the emotional states. So lack of significance, lack of, you know, love and connection, lack of growth, all these things. So, uh, you know, that being said, lack of love and connection is just the lack of the family and the wife is distressed and pressuring him to either figure it out, right? Figure out how you're going to make more money or go and get a new job, right? Feeling that pressure at home and not really able to, you know, work <laughs> on a daily basis without his wife, you know, or, or husband or partner, whoever, right? Complaining that they're not actually growing and not making the money they need to, right? Lack of growth kind of just talked about that. So exactly where he was a year ago, right? There's no progression over time, which most people, if they don't feel like they're growing, well, you're dying, right? It's the, the same that always, people always have. And there's also lack of contribution. So passionate about what he does, but he's not helping the clients and needs to because he's not generally generating the leads that he needs to. So now if we go to the other side, right? Looking at the emotional destination is this is certainty, significant love and connection growth, right? So certainty is knowing where his next clients are going to come from as opposed to where it was, right? Anxious of like, I don't know where my business is coming from, right? Significance, right? His peers and his coworkers are looking up to him, asking for advice, right? He's doing, you know, different workshops on how he's seeing so much crazy success, right? That's where he wants to be. Love and connection, right? His family, his wife loves and appreciates them as the provider, as opposed to the other side, you know, the wife is like really discounting his, his work saying, hey, you're not bringing in how much money you need to be. I'm here watching the kids, right? On the other side is they appreciate him for being the provider. Also, they have growth, right? Breaking records as opposed to before is being exactly where it was 
the year before and the year before in the same, you know, three or four years. And then also contribution, right? Making more impact case studies, helping more clients. This is the reason why people are going to buy. So again, most salespeople, right? They're going to say, oh, you don't have leads. Well, let me give you this system that's going to give you more leads, right? That's not going to make sales. What is going to make sales is, hey, John, look, this system that we have, and we'll cover scripting here in a little bit, this system that we have not only is going to help you get out of your situation of being in the same spot that you've been, you know, really not knowing where your business is going, you know, to a point where your wife and your family basically, you know, they're looking at you as not really the provider. We're going to help you get to, you know, the other side of that. So I can go on and on about that, but that's hopefully helping you understand emotional versus the, um, you know, emotional versus the surface level and both from a current situation to a destination. So really important note here, guys, this is going to make way more sense when we start to go through the exact scripting in the next series of videos. But I do want you to understand that just understanding the psychology behind this, understanding this will make you an absolute killer on your sales calls to a point where if you're a remote closer, right, it's going to help you close more deals and make you seem so much more competent on your sales calls for, you know, your sales manager or the owners of the company. And if you have your own business, or you're thinking about owning your own business, this can help you out a ton as well. All right. So let's talk about heaven Island versus hell Island. So it sounds a lot more dramatic than it is, but it's really just another way to position current situation versus desired situation. So this will make more sense. Heaven versus hell Island. When you see the diagram down below now, once you've elicited that emotion from the prospect, they're going to want to take action and get closer to their desired situation. However, is very important. This doesn't mean that they're going to want you to be their solution, all right? They're, they're not going to want your solution. So I think this is where a lot of, again, newer salespeople mess up is they talk about current versus desired situation. They ask, where are you now? Where do you want to be? But they don't position their method, right? Their thing, their end result as a solution that's going to help them get to their end result. And the only way to get there. So again, if we're looking at this kindergarten drawing here that I whipped up on my iPad is uh, we have a couple different things here. So I'm give, giving credit to where credit is due. Uh, Travis Sago, kind of an example from him. Also Cole Gordon, um, mostly all the stuff that I talk about. I mean, Cole is my direct mentor and business partner. So I learned a lot from him and I pretty much learned all sales stuff from him. So here's where we position it, right? We have Hell Island on the left side and he Heaven Island. So Hell Island is, you know, again, if we're using the weight loss example, I talk about that a lot. Um, so weight loss is like they are, you know, overweight, you know, it's making them impressed. They don't feel confident, right? Is we have heaven island on the other side is losing the weight, gaining the confidence, all those types of things. Now there's all these little pieces right here, right? All these different scenarios where, the, where it ends, right? These are different ways that are not gonna help them get to their end goal, right? So other options being, you know, maybe it's doing it themselves, right? Maybe it's a different competitor, whatever it is. As you're painting the picture of hell island versus heaven island, and I'll give you guys some examples here in a second, but the goal here is to position your solution as the only way they're going to get to that point, right? So the way that we can look at this in that weight loss example, and I'll give a couple examples, but weight loss here, right? This could be, you know, a uh, keto, right? This could be uh, another one of the, your weight loss competitors, right? Or one of the other courses that someone's selling. This could be, um, you know, uh, let's say it's the carnivore diet, right? This could be going vegan. Right. This could be, you know, a different situation that's, yeah, maybe it's going to get them to the end result. But remember what I talked about earlier, you need to position it as the fastest, most effective way to help them get to that point. And then, you know, each of these sharks is going to be just different objections. So we'll talk about some examples here in a second to where you'll be able to basically harpoon these sharks, as Cole likes to say, you'll harpoon these sharks before you get to the end. So that again, this becomes just the surefire way that they're going to want to get to that point. So a couple of different notes that I had down here. So number one, I just was to say paint, but paint heaven versus hell island clearly based on your question so again we'll talk about that more in the scripting section but just is just this is just to help you understand give you a visual representation of your goal on the sales call right so again destroy other options so you're going to ask based based on asking questions so asking questions of like you know what have you tried in the past um you know why like why did those things work for you why did they not right what research have you done about those things you can ask more questions and then ultimately harpoon those other options or harpoon the sharks um, based on the way that they answer those questions. So again, clearly show your path is the most likely, most effective, fastest way to success. We talked about that. Uh, but the key here, guys, is to bridge, help bridge the gap and create the path of least resistance and destroy all of the other options. That is your goal with hell versus heaven island. So keep in mind here, guys, there is only two jobs on every single sales call. And that is it. Only two jobs. Number one is to understand if and how you can help the prospect, right? If and how, because here's the thing, guys, 
is you're not going to be able to help every single person, right? Every person that comes through this on the sales call, you might not actually help them. So number one is just understanding if and how you can help them. And then in order to do so, you need to fully understand their current versus desired desire situation. We'll talk about chunking down the right questions to ask, all that kind of stuff on the uh, on the next video of all the scripting. But just again, this video is more of just understanding what you need to do. So number one, understanding if and how you can help the prospect. And number two is eliminate all the other object objections before the close, which means, again, destroying all the other options of getting to desired situation. More on that again in the next scripting video. Okay, so let's jump into the last section here, which is the belief ladder. This is a pretty dense section, but if you didn't take notes on like the rest of this video, you're going to want to take them on this one because this is going to help out a ton. So these are going to be the seven beliefs the prospect needs to have to buy. These are also going to be the seven reasons why your prospects don't buy, right? Those things are, and I'm going to show you in a second, but pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, and trust. So that again, pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust. The reason that I say that without showing you is I want you to understand that these are going to be things you need to have ingrained into your psyche. I can say these things in my sleep, right? Because I've said them over and over and over again, right? Pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust. Pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, for, like you just need to understand these at a really high level. So again, having these seven reasons that your prospect don't buy is what that means is every single objection can be traced back to one of the beliefs. This is why it's so important. Is there just like seven random things that you're gonna, you know, that I'm gonna tell you is anytime you get an objection is going to trace back to one of the seven beliefs we're gonna talk about. So the goal is to, by asking skilled questions, right, through this entire process, is you're building these beliefs in the prospect's heads and as a byproduct, you are getting the prospects to close themselves by the end of the call because by the end of the call, after asking these questions, I'm gonna give you some of the questions you can ask is by the end of the call is they don't have any of these objections because you've asked the right questions to destroy those objections before you even get there, right? So doing this also, again, it also means simultaneously you're breaking down the limiting beliefs as well, right? So we're talking about the seven beliefs. I kind of mentioned it here, right? The seven reasons your prospect won't buy, but the seven beliefs are also tied to seven limiting beliefs as to why they won't buy. Now, here's the ninja part here, guys, and why I just think it's so important to understand these psychological things is you can use any script out there. If you get the seven beliefs, you can use, you, you don't even have to cover, like go through a script. If you just understand these seven beliefs, it, obviously I don't recommend going to a conversation and, you know, ha, you know saying, Hey, do you have uh, this? Do you have that? Do you have this belief? Like, obviously don't say that, but you can really use any script if you understand the seven beliefs and the seven limited, limiting beliefs that go along with it. So if you haven't heard it enough already, let's do it one more time. So the seven beliefs are pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, and trust. Take a screenshot, whatever, take a picture if you need to see them here. So in this section, what we're going to do is I'm going to break down each of these beliefs in three parts. So number one is we're going to cover what the belief is. Number two is what questions you can ask to pull out that belief from the prospect and also what it needs to be, right? What the belief needs to be. And number three is the objection that it handles. So I'm going to basically prove to you that having these seven beliefs is going to break down a ton of different objections. So uh, this is just a quote from Cole. He talks about this all the time. Again, it's one of those things that is ingrained in the back of my mind is business is about solving problems. And when you solve problems, you create value and people exchange money from or for that value, right? So sales is just a demonstration that you can fix the problem for somebody else. I'll add one more thing to this is the reason remote closing is such a powerful thing is because you are solving a massive problem. The bigger problem that you solve, the more money you're going to make sales and doing sales and getting the business owners off of sales calls is a massive bottleneck for them, right? So that's why remote closers get paid a good amount of money for amazing quotes there from Mr. Cole Gordon. So let's go over the first one here, which is pain, right? Pain is going to be the gap between where they are right now and where they want to be. So you can talk about, I mean, the pain is talking about again, heaven Island versus hell Island. So the gap between where they are now or where they want to be. Um, so just understand here, guys, is that if there is no pain, right? Again, there's a, the, put the asterisk here. If there is no pain, there is no sale. And the reason that is because the rest of the beliefs that are on this, right? The other six are all predicated on the pain. And that'll all make sense here once we do just a full recap at the end. So I just want you guys to understand this. If there is no pain, there will be no sale, right? And pain is, it could be broken up into two things, right? You might be saying, well, Aaron, what if the prospect is, you know, they're already making a million bucks, right? There's no pain there, right? Pain can be broken into two things. There can be a pain, right? A physical pain of, let's say, I can't, you know, I can't pay my bills next month. Or the other pain could be an unfulfilled desire. So they might be making a hundred grand a month, but they want to be making a million a month 
and their peers are also making a million a month and they just feel really small in that in that friend group right so that is an unfulfilled desire it's not necessarily a pain of like oh my gosh like i can't survive right it's like oh my gosh i'm not the best i'm not you know living at the same uh the same level as my friends so the question that you can ask and again there's these are like single questions there's going to be multiple questions that you can like really dig into but i'm just trying to keep it simple for you guys so you can understand is the question you would say is so john you know prospect's name so john you know what do you feel like is the biggest challenge in your business right now right let's say if they want to make more money you know or let's say they're currently in a job right so john what do you feel like is the biggest challenge right now in, in getting you out of your nine to five job right uh weight loss so john what do you feel like is the biggest challenge right now of you know losing 15 pounds right so the reason that we want to pace as you uh phrase it as the challenge is because remember if there's no pain there's no sale we want to get the pain at the beginning so that the rest of the questions that we can ask are going to be based on that specific pain and again that'll make more sense as we go through these so uh what objection does this handle so that's going to be number three here this handles all of them right so again business is about solving problems and filling that gap and if you aren't aware that they have a problem you can't bridge the gap so it's like when you have heaven island versus hell island if you don't have a uh or yeah heaven island versus hell island, if they don't if they don't have a hell island or hell island to heaven island if they don't have a hell island you can't get them to heaven island because there is no starting point right it's like you know if you go and get into an uber and you say yo take me they're gonna be like what do you mean like take you where right that, that's a little bit more of like the end goal like of, of uh heaven island but the example still makes sense. <laughs> so last time here, guys, if there is no pain, there is no sale. So you need to get a pain. You need to get a pain point from the specific prospect. Okay, so let's cover down here. So the prospect must believe that it's possible, right? This is, so it's a little bit confusing because doubt is not believing. So I'm trying to like phrase it in the right way. So doubt is the prospect needs to believe that it's possible, but that they are not able to do it on their own. So this one's a little bit tough because you have to show them that it's possible, but also that they have to do it with you or doing it so themselves would waste time, money, resources, reputation. So let's say, for example, uh, again, they want to like build their business, right? Let's say they're doing $10,000 a month and they want to get to 20,000 a month, right? The prospect needs to believe that your thing, right? The way that you're teaching them to get that point, your service is going to help them go from 10 to $20,000 a month, but they can't do it themselves. And then doing it themselves might, you know, they're going to waste time because they have to go out and figure out exactly the strategies that you're using when they can just pay you and literally get to that point, right? So doubt is them fully understanding that your solution is going to help them get there. So, uh, you know, one of the things you can say is, you know, why don't you want to do this yourself, right? What's keeping you away from doing this yourself? So it's going to handle that objection, right? Um, or what have you done in the past to help you achieve X, Y, Z results? So sometimes the objection, right, is they say, you know, I'm going to go do it myself, right? So we're trying to get it away from them saying I'm going to do it themselves or you know, I don't think it's going to work, right? Because if they don't think it's going to work and let's say they've tried it in the past, that's why we're asking them, you know, what have you done in the past in order to do that? So there's a, it's a really interesting thing you have to get here. And this, I learned from Cole Gordon. He learned it from his mentors, but it's this, this, uh, this idea called the buying pocket. So when we're talking about current versus desired situation is you have their current state and desired state, and they have to be in this, like this middle area. And that's why I set up here, why it's a little bit tricky is because they have to believe that it's possible, right? So them being in this area here is they're in current state, right? If they're here, that just means they don't believe that it's possible of this method to help them get to end result, right? But they also have to believe that they can't do it themselves. So they have to be in this area where they believe that it's possible and they also don't believe that they can do it themselves and that is when they're going to buy. So based on the questions that you ask, you know, these are a couple of good ones, is you're gonna get them into that buying pocket so they understand that you are going to help them get from current state to desired state. Now I put a little note here at the bottom, sometimes doubt is built in, right? So for example, let's say if you're selling a CRM software, let's say it's a SaaS service, right? The doubt is already there because most people, if they get on a sales call and you're selling SaaS, is they're not gonna go out and like wanna build their own software, right? So is it's already built in. There's a couple different examples, but uh, that's like the main, the main example you can take away from this. Now, cost is not the price. Price, and you know, the money objection, right? That's money. And we'll talk about that in a second. But cost, I'd say this is probably the hardest because it's, it, in my opinion, it's kind of like an intangible, but the cost is the prospect must believe that doing nothing is far more painful than the investment in time and money to fix the problem. So this diagram kindergarten thing from Cole, <laughs> this will help, this makes sense in a, in a second. But 
um, really what this does is it helps with urgency, right? Urgency of why is this important now? So this is a question that I have in here is, you know, when you're on the sales call is, you know, John, you know, just curious, why is this important for you to fix right now? Like, as opposed to, let's say, you know, a month from now or three months from now, like why is this important right now? And you would chunk down, you know, you can ask more questions based on that, based on their answers. And what this does is, you know, this gets away from the objections of, I mean, the dreaded, right? This is what everyone struggles with. I need to think about it or let's get started next month. So you can handle, you can handle those objections before they come up when you understand the cost of not doing it. So I'm going to try to explain this. It's just a little bit difficult to, to, to explain, but on the left here, you have perceived pain. So if I had, let me just do the weight loss example. Cause that again, weight loss is just the easiest to, uh, to explain for me is down here we have the pain of time and money of the investment, right? Because if someone, let's say you're on a sales call, so you're selling them something. So there is gonna be a time and money investment, right? The pain of spending $5,000 for a weight loss program, but there's also the time that goes into it, right? They're gonna have to do the workouts. They're gonna have to eat right. They're gonna have to come to coaching calls. They're gonna have to attend coaching calls. They're gonna have to uh, fill out uh, tracking forms, right? Take Checking their weight drinking enough water, right? That's the pain here, but it needs to be less than the current and future pain of doing nothing. And this action threshold threshold, they need to get past that in order to buy the product. So for example, when you're talking about cost, right? In this weight loss example is again, they currently are in a position where like, yeah, they're going to invest money. But over here, it could be like, when we're talking about the cost is, Hey, so you know, what's going to happen if you don't lose 20 pounds and we're, go we're going back and forth to, you know, the emotional states is when you ask those emotional questions of, you know, why do you want to lose weight? Oh, because I, you know, I gained a, a ton of weight. My wife doesn't look at me, you know, the same anymore. And she doesn't want to be, you know, intimate with me in bed because of that. Right. That's kind of a dramatic example, but that needs to be stronger. Or, you know, another thing could be, you know, I, if my doctor says, if I don't lose this weight, I'm going to have to take medication for the rest of my life. So the, uh, you know, the, the pain of doing nothing of not being intimate with his wife, having to, you know, take medications, not being confident anymore, that pain needs to be more than this pain down here, right? The pain of the investment and, and things like that. So hopefully that makes sense. Right. And I'll, I'll just go back to it again, right? They need to believe that doing nothing is more painful than the investment in time and money to actually fix that problem. So if that makes sense, if that, if you have any questions, obviously, um, just let me know. So desire, right? So we're paying count, pain, doubt, cost, desire. So number four. So the prospect must believe that solving the problem in the gap will give them a better future situation. So really what this is, right? The desire, pretty self-explanatory, is this is their heaven island. So we need to know a couple of different things. We need to know what they want. We need to know why they want what they want. We need to know a number, a number assigned to that, right? That could be, you know, a scale from one to 10. And then also how getting what they want will impact another area of their life. So let's give a different uh, you know, example than weight loss. Um, the questions you can ask is, you know, okay, John, so, you know, you're telling me that you want to go from 10 to $20,000 a month in your business. I'm curious, like, you know, so that's what they want, right? You want to go from 10 to 20,000 a month. Um, you know, John, I'm just curious, like, why is that important to you? Like, why is it important to go from 10 to, you know, $20,000 a month? Um, and that's what I mean with the number, right? Is having a number, like a clear number of where they are to where they want to be, right? This could be, if we're doing weight loss, it's like, you know, I want to get from 10, 10 pounds to 20 pounds, right? If they're, uh, let's say dates, right? I want to go from, it's like a dating, dating example. I want to go from one date a month to 10 dates a month, right? This is giving you a, a number assigned of where they are to where they want to be really painting the picture of that heaven Island. And then also how getting what they want will impact other areas of their life. So it's, it's important to get all these things. An example of that, would be, you know, let's say the 10 to 20,000 a month. They're at 10,000 a month. They want to go to 20,000 a month. The reason they want to do that is because it is going to give them more money to pay for more, uh, or to, to hire someone on to help them take over their video editing so that they can spend more time with their family or, you know, spend more time actually enjoying the money that they're making within their business. So as you can see at the very beginning, it's like, oh, I want to make more money, but it's like, okay, what do you want? Right? You want to make more money. Why do you want that? a number assigned to that, and then how that's going to impact other areas of their life. And you need to have all four of these. It can't just be, remember, it can't just be a surface level. It has to be the emotional level as well. So this will help, help you handle a ton of different objections, right? Similar to the pain 
um because you're you're getting them from pain hell island to the uh, heaven island so this really will help uh handle any objection out there and then you can start to call out if it's actually what they want right actually the desire so money this is the one that you know everyone's always looking at right so this is the belief that the prospect has the resources and the willingness to fix the problem so there's reason that there's two of these right resources and willingness right resources and you know again keep in mind not having the resources is a condition not an objection so them saying i don't have the money is different from them willing to spend that money right so when we're talking about having the resources right if they literally have let's say your program is five thousand dollars and or that you're selling is five thousand dollars and they currently have two hundred dollars in the bank account right that is a condition not an objection if they come up with the objection of i just that's too expensive it literally is too expensive so you got to make sure that you're asking those questions and you know we can go more into that of, if, of having and we talked about it down here right having the open wallet technique um so the questions you can ask right where are you right now in terms of your business so if they currently have a business is you can you can gauge money wise if they have the money by asking these questions so you can say you know where are you right now in terms of your business and they would say, I'm making 20,000 a month, right? You would chunk down to that, right? You would ask like, okay, cool. And is that net or gross, right? And then based on that, it's like, okay, that's um, that's gross. Okay, what's net after expenses, after you pay everything? Oh, it's this amount, right? And so they, if they physically tell you, I'm making $5,000 a month and that's, you know, savings basically, is now, you know, okay, they have the money. Now we just gotta get the willingness of them, you know, to to fix that problem and and jump into it and spend that money. Um, and then you can also, you know, figure out what their current job is, right? So ask them the questions of, you know, what do you do for work right now? Oh, I'm unemployed. Well, that's going to already precede. Well, they might not have the money. And then I'm going to dig deeper into that, right? So again, more questions chucking down. We'll cover in the next episode. Um, so, so a big thing here, if they don't have the willingness, this usually ties back to not having enough cost. So I didn't put it on here, but you know, the objection obviously is them saying like, that's too expensive. We're trying to stay away from that. So if they don't have the willingness, this usually ties back to not having enough cost. So as you can see, and really what this ties back to is like the cost objections is going to be the same objections here based on that. Second to last here, we have support. So this is the people around them. So this could be their spouse, their partner, whoever in support of fixing the problem, right? So this could be a wife, a husband, a partner, whoever, or a business partner, right? They need to fully support this person fixing whatever problem they have. So so what some of the questions you've been asked is, you know, what does your spouse slash partner think about you fixing insert problems? So what is your, you know, spice, spice, <laughs> what does your spouse or partner think about you losing 20 pounds, right? Oh, they would love it, right? Um, and what you're trying to do is make sure that that person isn't going to get in the way of making a decision. And that's the reason you ask these, these questions. So a, a better way to do it is like get in front of it before the call. So let's say you're, you know, the appointment setter and you're setting the call is you know a question would be you know is there anyone else that needs to be on the meeting before you know before we set the call so this could be in like an application you can say you know are you the only decision maker right you can have that as a checkbox they click that um if they don't click that then maybe you can jump on a call with them you know cancel the, maybe not cancel the call but just have a little bit more understanding of like you know okay you're not the main decision maker let's like get them on the meeting right can we like include them in the call can you put you know, an extra email, the person needs to be there, right? It just helps you out a ton. Um, so again, I need to talk to my spouse or partner. This is a massive one, guys. Like I can't even tell you how many times people will say, well, I got the objection of like, I need to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my, to my partner, right? Um, now, a, we'll talk a lot more about objection handling. A lot of times this is gonna be a smoke screen and there's ways to handle the objections, but this, this training isn't about like handling objections. This is just to like show you what understanding these things, right? Understanding the beliefs is going to help you know the the objections that you handle so um a couple examples that you can and questions you can ask so trust do they see your solution right do they trust in your solution as clearly different unique and superior than that of the similar things that they've tried right so one of the one of the questions you can ask is you know on a scale from one to ten right john and this is all going to be through the pitch right so so a lot of the other things are based on questions that you ask this is going to be something that after you ask all those questions there's a transition where you say, hey, so John or, you know, Mr. Prospect, is it cool that I share with you how I can help you go from Hell Island to Heaven Island? Yes. And you obviously answered that. You wouldn't say Hell Island versus Heaven Island. And after that, you would you would do your pitch and then you would ask this question on a scale from one to 10. How confident is it that our method is going to help you achieve insert goal? Depending on what they say, if they say anything less than 10, there's there's a trust barrier there. 
not going to go a ton into the objection handling, but you basically want to say, okay, cool. Where do those last points lie? When they say, oh, it's in X, Y, Z, you would handle whatever that comes up. So let's just say, for example, um, it's, uh, you know, I just still, I'm, I'm confused on like how this thing works, right? You would handle that. You'd ask a question again. Okay. Now where are we on that scale from a 10? If they give you a 10, now they should trust and be bought in into your method being a thing that's going to help them get there. Um, we'll talk more about that here in a second too. So what this does is it helps you, um, you know, overcome the objections, really any other objection, but more specifically, I've been burned in the past or, you know, I hey, have tried this before, right? They need to be sold on your method being the thing. So again, basically putting it here, the process needs to be 100% sold on two things. Number one, the method, right? That you're teaching them and the product. So for example, if you are selling a, uh, a course on YouTube, right? A course on, on YouTube, uh, organic content, right? The method would be organic content, right? YouTube organic content. So a lot of the way that you ha handle the question or the way that you do your pitch is you're selling them on the method of why YouTube is great, right? So YouTube organic, it's, it's good because you don't have to spend money on ads. It's good because it's, you know, well, it, it's free, right? It's good because the leads are warmer. It's good because all these things, right? You're selling them on the method during the pitch. And then they also need to be sold on your product and your way of doing it specifically, because if either of those things are not true, right? If they're not sold on the method or the product, they do not trust the method or the product and they are not going to buy, right? So they need to be sold on those things in order to move forward, right? So not only trust, but literally all the other, other ones that we talked about. So here's going to be the, the big aha moment of if you're hearing a lot of the same things in terms of the problem, right? So look at this pain is at the top, right? The pain is going to be their problem or the gap in between where they are and where they want to be. Doubt is that they can, that they can fix the problem, right? Can they actually, can, or can you fix the problem for them? Cost of not fixing the problem, right? Understanding the desire to fix the problem, understanding the, that they have the money to fix the problem, understand they have the support in fixing the problem. And they understand that they trust that your solution is going to fix the problem. So you can see if you don't have pain, there is no sale because if you don't have pain, you can't establish the pain in any of these, right? If they don't have the pain, there's no doubt in fixing whatever that is, because guess what? There is no problem. There is no sale, right? If there is no problem. There's no getting the doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust of those problems is because you don't have the problem because you don't have the pain. All right, guys, that was a long one. It was dense, but I know it's going to help you guys out a ton. So next up in the series, we're going to go over next video, full closing script and how to become a master salesperson. Also how to land your first remote closing and appointment setting role. Uh, you know, where to find those jobs, objection handling jujitsu, some ninja tactics there, advanced sales techniques, as well as how to ascend even past becoming a remote closer. So click the video on screen right now to bring you to the next video that might not be done just yet. So Again, if you want to reach your goals a little bit quicker and hold you accountable every single step of the way, make sure to click the button right down below. It's going to bring you to the remote closing masterclass. That's going to just give you everything right up front and give you everything you need in order to become a successful remote closer.